Ladies and gentlemen, GTX 1080. Nine teraflops, eight gigabytes of... In May of 2016, NVIDIA hosted an event that would put them so far ahead of the competition, AMD wouldn't be able to catch up for at least another two generations. This event was the release of the GTX 1080, a truly phenomenal graphics card. Its performance was so high and price so fair that consumers couldn't believe it. Even the audience was ecstatic. For just $600 US, you could own this flagship graphics card with state-of-the-art performance, which would rival even NVIDIA's next generation to come. But NVIDIA did not quit while they were ahead. Early the next year in March of 2017, NVIDIA would host another event to release the GTX 1080 Ti. Even more power. But not just that. They were our friends. They wanted to do us a favor. They're really on our side. And so they dropped the price of the GTX 1080 to just 500 US dollars. So that more of you can enjoy the world's best graphics card. They were really on a roll and couldn't be stopped. Over the next few generations, Nvidia went on to release their RTX series, the 20 series, 30 series, and then 40 series. Products which also went on to break performance records at reasonable prices that consumers loved. And while I'll get to the 40 series later, at least the 20 and 30 series were released at comparable prices to the GTX 1080, with the 80 flagships of those series being $700 US across both generations. But you see, unfortunately not everyone lives in the timeline that I've been describing. Some of us don't live in the US and well, we don't exactly get US RRP. Here in Australia, for example, the original GTX 1080 at its US price of 600 US converts to Australian $830 at the time. But that's not what we paid for the GTX 1080. Instead, when the GTX 1080 hit our store shelves, we got a price point of $1,200 Australian. It was a giant $370 price premium over the straight US to AU price conversion. Fast forward to September of 2018 with the release of the RTX 2080, and that was launched at 700 US, which is around 970 Australian. But again, on store shelves, we were paying $1,300 for this product. At least in that generation, we had the GTX 16 cards to offer some affordable alternatives over here. Then you get to the RTX 30 series. See, when the 30 series came out, Nvidia did something strange. They decided not to actually release the Founders Edition in Australia at all. So there were no cards available at the lowest RRP possible. Instead, we were left with board partner cards, which were priced however the board partners wanted to set them. Case in point, take a look at this chart from the Nvidia 30 series keynote. This is supposed to demonstrate that the 3080 would launch around the same price as the 2080 Super, but with way more performance than the 2080 Ti. Jensen was promising a huge leap in the performance to price ratio, but over here in Australia, all we could do was clench our cheeks in the anticipation of the Australian price reveal. While the 3080 RRP was 700 US, which puts it at about 1000 Australian, it was on our shelves for $1,600 Australian. That puts it around here in the chart that Jensen presented in the 3080 keynote when you convert our Australian shelf price back to US. Again, Australians were getting shafted. And that brings us to today with the 4000 series graphics cards. With prices so obscene, it just borders on surreal. To put this into perspective, take a look at this chart that I've put together. This shows each generation's chipset at its American RRP in red. That's converted to Australian in blue, and green is the actual on-shelf price that we ended up paying. I think it's pretty clear things have gone too far when we're paying $750 above the direct US conversion and $1,000 above the previous generation's on-shelf price. And where NVIDIA once proclaimed during the 1080 launch that they're on our side and they're all about gamers and supporting the industry, 
It's hard to believe now when their prices are so high that the barrier to entry is becoming unattainable for a lot of people. I bring all this up now because Nvidia is on the cusp of releasing their new card, the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model. This card is already available for pre-order in Australia and when I saw the price, I just couldn't believe it. I'd really love to know which Nvidia executive is deciding the on-shelf prices they want to achieve for these entry-level products because the on-shelf price of this mid to low tier graphics card is now so high that it's actually competing with that price of the 1080 when it released as a flagship back in 2016. In fact, the cheapest 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte card that I could find on pre-order is just $40 cheaper than the RTX 4070 12 gigabyte. Think about that. A 4060 Ti is just $40 cheaper than the on-shelf price of an RTX 4070. Who in their right mind would pick the 4060? So I'd like to know if it's that easy for me to work out that this thing is priced way too high. Why can't an executive at Nvidia who's being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to make these decisions do something intelligent to make sure it hits our shelves at reasonable prices? It kind of just feels like Nvidia doesn't care what price lands on our shelves over here. So yeah, the timeline that we're on, we're on the one where you have to pay out the ass for entry level cards. And I know, it's not just NVIDIA, it's the board partners, it's tax, it's importing, it's the retailers, but for the most part, it's NVIDIA. Don't lie to yourself. As it happens, I'm actually a long-term NVIDIA fan, which makes this really hard. In fact, I have my first NVIDIA graphics card sitting beside me right here. Oh, didn't you see it? It was sitting there the whole time. This is the GeForce 4. TI4200 and I've owned this card since I was 16 years old. I played Counter-Strike 1.5 on this graphics card. I played Unreal Tournament Game of the Year Edition on this. I played Far Cry. I played some Doom 3 on this. Didn't run that good but I did play it. And ever since I bought this I've been a fan of Nvidia and I've looked and waited for their graphics card releases every generation. And I still to this day enjoy staying up late at night to watch their new keynotes and new releases at 3 a.m. in the morning here. But it's becoming increasingly irrelevant for us to stay up until 3 a.m. to see the latest releases and prices when those US prices increasingly have no correlation to what we can get over here in Australia at all. While those in the US can watch those keynotes and they can see the price and they know that's ex the exact price that they're going to pay, we have no idea until it hits our shelves. NVIDIA are responsible for producing the best graphics hardware on the market. There's no question about it. And to be honest, they probably produce the best computer hardware full stop. And that's why for so many of us Australians, our relationship with NVIDIA has just become bittersweet. Because while we can admire the hardware and it is exciting to see what kind of performance and graphical feature leaps we get from generation to generation, it's just as much a game of waiting to see how hard we're going to get fucked when that stuff lands on our shelves.